Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's lecture is an introduction to Z transform. And here we'll be primarily discussing example 10.1 from Mr. Oppenheim's book of signals and systems. Uh, if you recall, in the continuous time signal, we used this formula to define uh, the Laplace transform. Similarly, in discrete time, we'll be defining Z transform almost similar except for the integration, we will be using summation sign. So that Z transform of Xn would be written sum uh, minus infinity to plus infinity Xn and with that we multiply Z minus M. And like here, S was the uh, um, complex quantity. Similarly, N is an integer. This one is an integer. And Z is, an, in general, a complex number. Now, there are several forms of complex numbers that are used. Uh, and all are applicable here. But we will preferably use the exponential form. So Z transform, uh, Z is, will be some magnitude R e to the power J omega. And in this, instead of Z uh, bracket X n, we simply, we could write X Z. And this formula remains same. We will follow this pattern. Okay, now straight away to the question. So pole zero plot and region of convergence for signal ANUN. Okay, now we know that UN in case of a discrete would look like this. Before zero, the value of the signal is zero. After zero, the value of the signal is one. And you could just draw vertical lines here to show discrete times. So in the in the formula for xz will now replace xn by this value. So a n u n and z minus m. And as we mentioned here that u n is zero before zero that is from Z minus infinity to minus one, this will be zero. And so we will further modify, modify the summation sign. And we can say that it's starting from zero to infinity uh, and U n value is one. So this portion only uh, before zero, it is all zero. And uh, simply we just get rid of one. So this is the value. And we can also further simplify that taking the power out. The, this is the term that we'll be using. Now, there is a condition for this to converge. For convergence of Xn, converge, that means remain within the finite limit. This whole value, this whole summation, must be less than infinity. And I'll just uh, um, take a very, very simple example. For A, Z inverse 1, this value, if we take it to be greater than 1, that is 1.1 or 1.01, and take some power, if we take 100, it is the value is 13780. If we increase the power, it is you can see 2.46 times the power 41. And if this value goes to infinity, obviously this is gradually increasing and it will go to infinity. But if this value is less than 1, that is, let's say for example 0 0.9, then with the increase in power, it is gradually decreasing. So 0 0.00265, here 1.7, 10 raised to the power minus 46. And up when we go to infinity, it will be zero. 
that means here it is converging when the value is less than one but when the value is greater than one then it is not converging keep this in mind and so we can write the condition that for converging this value the mod of az minus one has to be less than one and from here we can write uh, this as a over z has to be less than one and then we take z on the right hand side so z will be greater than a so this is generally used that uh, for conversions z has to be greater than a so z greater than a is the region of validity that in this region the z transform has a value it is finite so that is why it is called the region of convergence or ROC. Now, how do we plot the region of convergence? Very simple. Again, we can take uh, from here this one. So you can see R is a, a radius of a circle and then theta is the angle. But another way to view this is if we take the polar or the rectangular portion and then we take the, um, to find the mag or magnitude, we take a square under root and from there a squaring. So this is the equation of a circle. So that means the uh, plot will be a circle with center at 0, 0 and radius A. It will be like this. Circle, origin 0, 0, radius is A. And because of this angle, you can see as if the point is moving. So that is why it is circle. So this is how we plot the ROC. Now in our case, the ROC is valid for greater than 1. That means this is uh, sorry, greater than A. It has to be outside. The validity is outside of this limit or this circle. And that is why we have shown it with the dashed line. So this is the ROC area. Inside this is not valid. Okay, so we have found the ROC. Now we have to find the algebraic equation uh, for xz uh, for plotting zero and poles. So this was the equation. Now we have learned a formula, uh, it's a GP formula, I guess, that if the value of x or the, is less than one, then we can use this formula for summation. If the summation is from 0 to infinity xn, it can be written as 1 over 1 minus x. Now, just compare the two. This summation is same in our case. This az minus 1 is equal to x. So, the only condition is that az minus 1 has to be less than 1 to find this formula. So, we can say that this can be written as 1 over 1 minus x or a z minus 1 from here and further we can manipulate this and taking lcm we get this answer so this is the algebraic equation for the z transform provided we and the roc is greater than z greater than a so this is the complete answer keep in mind that a z transform has to be defined in terms of algebraic equation and roc we will see in example two that the algebraic equation is same and roc is different and so the plot will be different now pole zero plot this was the equation we know that when we put the numerator is equal to zero that gives us the zero value and when the new denominator is equated with zero this gives us the pole value so 
Okay, so for zero, the numerator has to be zero. This one, that means z has to be zero. And we mark the, this, this is the zero symbol for zero. We mark it at point zero zero from here. What about pole? From here again, you can see that for pole, the denominator has to be zero. That means z minus a has to be zero or z has to be equal to a. So this is the point z is equal to a is the pole point. And remember, this, this hole is the a, so it could be anywhere here. Okay, and for value of a between 0 and 1, if the a is between 0 and 1, the pole zero and the region of convergence is shown in this figure. So this is the uh, this is called a unit circle. Unit circle gives us a limit that this limit we we, we cannot exceed this. Our z transform uh, cannot exceed one for being uh, valid. And in the book, uh, this diagram has been shown slightly misleading, I guess, uh, and uh, because the importance of unit transform comes uh, for the Z transform, uh, for the uh, Fourier transform. Uh, and this has been corrected by Mr. Oppenheim, actually, uh, to make it similar to ours. So this is the correct diagram. You see, the region of convergence is shown by the dashed line, and this is uh, the pole and zero. Now just for uh, information of some of you, uh, if the ROC, this is dashed line is our ROC, if the ROC includes the unit circle, so our unit circle is within the ROC, then the Fourier transform also converges. Now, uh, we'll, we'll, we see when we read the Fourier transform, uh, or when we try to correlate Fourier transform with that transform, then this is important. But if A is greater than one, the, the A here is greater than one, this is our unit circle, then the ROC does not include the unit circle. Now you see the ROC will always start outside A. So this is our ROC. So ROC does not include the unit circle. And therefore the Fourier transform of this uh, value does not uh, converge. Not very important, but just for your idea. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your feedback.